Welcome back dear students. In today's video, I am going to discuss 5 spin python. Before I proceed further, let us see the outcomes of today's video. By the end of this video, you will be able to explain how data can be saved even after the power failure, explain files in python, you will be able to open a file in python using a python script and you will be able to explain organization of text files. Let's start the discussion dear students. Dear students, so far we have learned how to write programs and communicate our intentions to CPU using conditional execution, functions and iterations. We have learned how to create and use data structures in main memory. Data structures is nothing but say we have created say some variables, we have created even uh, tuple, we have created list. Okay, so any of say list and tuples we are going to discuss in module 3. Importantly, the CPU and main memory are where our software works and runs. It is where all the thinking happens. Means in inside the CPU itself, all the thinking is going to happen. Means the software, whatever the, the program we are going to execute, it will be stored in a main memory, and from the main memory, it will be supply, supplied to the CPU. But we know that once the power is turned off, anything stored either in CPU or main memory is erased. So, up to now, our programs have just been a transient fun exercises to learn pro Python. Means whatever we have done so far, say just to learn a Python, we have written a code. But what the data on which we are going to work should be stored so that even after the power failure, it should be available for us. Like say for example, dear students, if we are working on some bank bank transaction, after some withdrawal or say debit or say credit to the bank account, the same thing should be reflected in the account of that person and it should be available even after the power failure. The data should exist. It should persist even after the power failure. So if we see, dear students, this particular hardware details we have seen even in an introduction class if we see here the software is going to be stored here and uh, as on when the cpu will request a instruction it will be supplied from the main memory but whatever we store here either in cpu or main memory will be erased after the power failure and if at all we want to retain such data it should be stored in a secondary memory Okay, how we can save that in a secondary memory that, that we are going to see in this particular video. Secondary memory is not erased when a power is turned off or in the case of USB flash drive, the data we write from our programs can be removed from the system and transported to another system. Dear students, when we save in a secondary memory, say it will be stored in a secondary memory and is available even after the power failure. So for example, if we take a USB flash drive as a secondary memory, whatever the data stored in that flash drive can be transported to another system. How it can be stored? It can be stored as a file. Okay. So basically a file is a group of characters. A text file is a group of characters. Whereas a file like image file, audio file, video file, it will be something like a group of binary digits, binary numbers. Uh, before we want to read or write to a file, we should first open a file. And let's see how to open a file. When we want to read or write a file, say from, for example from a hard disk, we first open a file. Opening the file communicates with our operating system, which knows where the data for each file is stored. Dear students, if at all we want to open a file, Okay, that opening of a file is going to communicate with the operating system because operating system knows where that file means a data for that particular file is stored. When we open a file, we are asking the operating system to find the file by name and make sure the file exists. Normally say we human beings will communicate with the file name. Okay, when we give a file name, the operating system should find 
that particular file using its name means where the data of that file exists it should find and give us but dear students we should make sure that that file exists we are going to see one example in that example we open a file called mbox.txt which should be stored in the same folder means this particular file we can download from this particular link whenever you work that this file which is named mbox.txt should be stored means when we start the python interpreter in which particular folder the interpreter will open there itself we are supposed to store this file what i do dear students first i am going to download this file in front of you and this is pi4e.com yes dear students this is the file you can see this file it's a very big file actually basically what this file is it's been given here it's a actually mailbox it contains the header of mails okay because of that the name of the file is mbox.txt so what i do i'm going to save this file okay dear students from this itself i'll save uh, i'll save in a folder called uh, say for example i'll save in a folder i'll make a new folder say python code and here i'll save this okay directly i have saved it yes dear students i have downloaded the file and i have saved with the name mbox.txt now to open that file there is a built in function called open what this function does is it will going to take the name of the file as a string and it returns a file handle which should be stored in a some variable when if the file open is successful the operating system returns returns us a file handle what basically a file handle is the file handle is not the actual data contained in the file but instead it is a handle that we can use to read the data dear students whenever we are going to open a file uh, we'll get a uh, handle which uh, we call it as a file handle actually using that file handle we can either read from the file or write to the file it's not that when we open a file the file will be opened means it will not contain actual data instead it's a special type of data structure a file handle is a special type of data structure using which we can either read from the file or write to the file okay dear students what we do say let us open the file first for that purpose let me start a python interpreter i have opened a terminal and here i use a command python before that dear students say as i have told i have stored a that particular file in a python codes if i use a command ls here one folder i have created that folder name is python code okay so what i do i'm going to change the directory to python code okay so now this is the directory say ls is going to list all the files and folders say mbox txt is a file here now in this particular folder i'm going to launch python 3 now dear students if i write f handle is equal to open and the file name is mbox dot txt now when i enter it it will not return anything that means say whatever statement we have given it's been executed properly now if we print that file handle we can see dear students it is a text io wrapper the name of the file is mdocs.txt and the mode in which mode we have opened by default it will open in a read mode and this is a say encoding method utf8 so there are many encoding methods means how a should be stored how b should be stored in binary so for that purpose there are different encoding methods and the encoding methods here it's been used is utf8 okay remember dear students two things here important the name of the file is this and the mode means in which mode we have opened a file by default when we open a file the file will open in a read mode means we cannot write to a file so later we are going to see how to read from a file and how to write to a file now dear students the file handle is not the actual data as i told but instead it is a handle that we can use to read the data and we are given a handle if the requested file exist and if we have proper permissions to read the file this is very important dear students we are going to get a file handle for a given file only when if that file exist 
and if we have a proper permissions to read the file if we don't have a permissions to read that particular file then even that file cannot be opened and we don't get any file handle i'll show you one example in this particular folder there is only one file which is mbox.txt instead of opening that file if i open say some other file let's say for example something like example.txt now you can see dear students here file not found error means no such file or directory exist so whose name is example.txt so and one more thing what i do dear students i am going to take the permissions of a read file uh, means that mdocs.txt file read permissions i'll take there is a command for that so i'll take a uh, i'll take out the permission ch mode say so i'll take all the permissions of a mbox.txt means it cannot be read now even i'll show you that in a folder if i open a folder here python code you can see dear students it's been locked means you cannot open if i try to open it couldn't open a file you don't have permissions necessary to open a file means i have taken all the permissions okay so now uh, i'll run a uh, python 3 interpreter now if at all i try to open that mbox.txt now you can see permission error earlier you have got say file doesn't exist means uh, uh, that error is file not found error but this error is permission error permission denied means we don't have a read permission for this particular file so that's what the dear students if at all we want to open a file two things are very important one thing is that file should exist in the same folder where we are going to run our python interpreter and second thing is we should have a proper permission if at all we, we are opening a file for a reading we should have a read permission if at all we are opening a file for writing we should have a write permission so otherwise we are going to get file not found error or permission error hope this is clear to all of you dear students so what we can do so when we get an error like this we can use a try and accept to deal more gracefully with the situation where we attempt to open a file that doesn't exist means say for example uh, if we are reading a file name from a user if a user enters a file name which doesn't exist might be because of some uh, spelling mistake if that file doesn't exist what we can do say we can gracefully put a message stating that the file doesn't exist instead of displaying all these errors which will be unfamiliar means the user will not be familiar with these kind of errors okay what we can do in such case we can tell that such file doesn't exist properly that we'll see later dear students and it can be done using try and accept block now dear students as i told we are going to discuss little bit about text files and lines basically what a text file is a text file can be thought of as a sequence of lines much like a python string can be thought of a sequence of characters means when we have discussed a string string is nothing but a sequence of character similarly a file is nothing but a sequence of lines for example this is a sample whatever it's been given here is a sample of a text file which records a mail activity from a various individuals in an open source project development team whatever that mbox txt have downloaded dear students it's a screenshot of a little screenshot of that particular file this particular file contains mail activity from a various individuals in an open source project development team okay so what it contains it contains like say from where this particular mail has been received which day date and the time everything it contains and even written path date so, so many things this we call, uh, normally call it as a header of the mail okay this entire file can be downloaded either from this particular link or even say, this file this file is a very big file if at all you want to work with a short file even a shortened version of that file exists and you can download that from this particular link the name of this uh, the full file is mbox.txt whereas the name of short file is mbox-short.txt now to break the files into lines there is a special character that represents the end of the line called a new line character miss dear students when i told a file is nothing but a sequence of lines and every line can be broken means uh, each line can be separated using a special character which is called as a 
uh, end of the line and it's also called as a new line character in python we represent a new line character as a backslash n like something like a backslash n in a string constant because backslash n is a one character dear students this is actually string constant not just in python even in any other programming uh, languages most of the like say c c plus plus java slash n is used for representing a new line character even though slash n looks like a two characters it's actually a single character when we look at the variable by entering say for example stuff in a interpreter it shows us the slash n in the string but when we use print to show the string we we see the string broken into two lines like say for example dear students if we uh, take uh, this particular example say for here stuff is equal to hello slash n world so this is a string this string we are we have stored in a stuff okay slash n is a new line character when we print stuff means when we type stuff we are going to print get hello slash n word as it is but when we try to print it wherever slash n is there it will going to break the line because of that hello is on one line and world is on second line similarly here if you if you see some stuff is equal to x slash n y if we print it x and y will be on a separate line and yes students say as i told slash and n means backslash and n are not different characters backslash and n uh, n is only one character so that can be confirmed by just looking at the length of a stuff len of stuff you can see it's 3 x y two characters and slash n is considered as only single character so i'll show you this dear students like i'll take something is equal to hello slash n world now if i write something we'll get same as it is hello slash n world but if i try to print this you can see dear students hello wherever slash n is there new line and then world similarly if i change this something is equal to a string x slash n y when i see the that string something we get as it is the string stored in a something but if i try to print it x and y are separated by slash n nothing but new line and so if we want a length of that then something you can see dear students it is three characters because x is one y is second and slash n is considered as single character we can also see that the length of string x n x slash n y is three characters because the new line character is a single character so when we look at lines in a file we need to imagine that there is a special invisible character called uh, called the new, new line at the end of each line that marks the end of the line so the new line character separates the characters in files into lines okay so those sequence of characters is going to be separated as a lines using the new line character so hope this is clear to all of you dear students this let me stop here thank you thank you for watching